everybody to Face the Facts. It's great to see you all here virtually once again. I am Nick Face. We have Phil Healy and Tom Smith also here. I am coming to you from my brand new office that we have at my office and bar that we have in Woburn called Empower Woburn. Um, come on down, check it out. It's an awesome spot for some great teas and shakes. On today's episode here of Face the Facts, we're going to be talking about what the Red Sox are doing here with their managerial weight. Like what, if it was Alex Cora, wouldn't it be named right now? We're gonna talk about the Patriots who are in shambles and talk about the box with Tom Brady and everything there, the trade deadline passed for the NFL um, on this version of this show. So we hope you enjoy it. Um, I wanna start off first with uh, the New England Patriots. I, I'm, I'm done with, I'm pretty much, this is a wash basically for their season. Um, they lost again to Buffalo and they are now sitting at, is it two and five on the season now? Yep. Doesn't look doesn't look too good, gentlemen. Nope. Um, there was some hope there at the end with 45 seconds left or 50 seconds left, whatever it was. You should have won the game. We, yeah. I think uh, I think in the sec going into the second half, Cam felt like he needed to do everything himself. I think I he, just don't understand the play call there where. Newton had the ball with what was it like 43 seconds or something left and they elect to go with a Newton run when uh, Damian Harris was doing a great job in this game. I, I, the protection right there would have been to have him just get, hand the ball off to him, set up a field goal and tie the game. Yeah, uh, there was that. I don't, know why, I don't know what the heck was going on. He, he had, I don't know. He had he had a he had the he had the lane there. I think it was I think he just got unlucky. He, um, the defender, the Buffalo defender, came up from behind and just knocked the ball out of his arm. So from my count, though, there are three losses on the board for the Patriots that actually technically should have been wins, if I'm not mistaken. Seattle should have been a win. They coughed that one away. We had uh, the game against Kansas City uh, could have been a win. Kansas City, yeah. Should have I mean, been. but that I mean, I'd say Denver. I would uh, say Kansas City should have been a win, but the Kansas City was, could have been a win. No, I think it was close. I think you're right. I think they, yeah. What was it? Yeah, uh, Bills, yeah. Uh, Seattle, and Denver. I'd say. Right. Yeah. So I just I I don't know what to think here. On the, I I see some people have just said goodbye. The season is nothing. Forget about it. I see some people that just say, hold on, for, hold on, hope. There might be a way for this team to get it together and change. I mean, we do have the Jets this upcoming Monday. So, I mean, no win is an easy win, but I'm thinking that that should be a win. That makes you three and five. I, I don't know. Yeah, I think we're all kind of <laughs> weirdly reeling. I mean, I – I'll say this, you know, the division is, I think the, the division is out of reach, but I mean, let's see what happens with. Cause is it, is it though? Because from what we saw from uh, Buffalo this past weekend, they didn't impress me at all. No, but I don't, whether they're talent, I think they're good enough to not drop X amount of games. I just think it would be tough to catch up. Uh, but you know, you're right. I mean, honestly, like numerically, you're not out of it, but I mean, I think, Get into the playoffs. I think they have a chance to do it. I mean, but they'd have to play. I, I don't. Do you think they're in a, a, a space mentally and physically, or even just talent wise, no. that they could they, get there? They need. They need to win the rest of the season. In well, order the deadline to make the game passed, so Gilmore's still a Patriot. So I mean, there's a glimmer of hope right there. You still have him on your side. You did return David Andrews this past week, which was a big help on the line. Another positive is um, our, our running back is uh is back Sonny michelle so he'll be back this upcoming week and the other positive is you just signed two um wide receiver depth players that could potentially help this team out i'm not going to say that there's no hope but i'm not going to put the percentage super high i still think there's an outside chance that the patriots still make the playoffs but i don't think i don't think they, this is anywhere close to being a super bowl team or they, they a have to run. They'd have to win the rest of the season, or at least ten out of the last eleven. Uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, eight of, or all nine. What are we? Yeah, nine, nine. I don't even know. I don't even know. 
They'd have to win the rest of the season. There's, oh. what, nine games left? Yes. yes. Yeah, so they'd have to win the rest of the season. Well, the division or to Cubs get into the playoffs? To get into the playoffs. Are you, oh, really? Is it that competitive right now? Well, Miami's, I think, like two games behind Buffalo. Yeah. I mean, the Jets have no shot. But, I mean, you look at the AFC and you know, I mean, it, it's going to be tougher this year well. than it has I mean, been in previous years. That division with Pittsburgh and the Ravens and all of that, I mean, that's pretty stacked. So, you probably those two teams, you, you got to definitely look at as being in the playoff. Picture. No, that's a good point. Baltimore, Pittsburgh, so, Kansas City, we're all, we'll all make the playoffs. So, in Tennessee, Buffalo, you got to, if it's Tennessee. a wild card team, you know, say it's Buffalo and Miami that are atop the list of the Patriots are, I don't know, uh, eight, and, eight and eight. That's not good enough. Honestly, I think it could it, it could potentially be Tennessee and the Patriots in the wild card game. Again, you could like probably, yeah, you could. Better. I just do. I like Tennessee better. So that's my that's my stance on it. Um, I wanted to ask you guys about just the play calling. Uh, you know, does Belichick deserve some criticism here on sticking with Cam Newton for as long as he has, or not playing certain players, or? even Josh McDaniels. I mean, should we be critical of the calls that are coming from the sidelines for the team? Um, I mean, for, for some of the games, yeah. But for this, this game against Buffalo, I'd say, I, I wouldn't say, I, I'd say no. Uh, the first half, you know, the game plan didn't go as planned. And then they changed it up in the second half and it seemed to work. I mean, I, I shut it off after – I think halfway through the second when they went down 14 to nine or 14 to six, whatever it was, I was like, okay, well, this game's basically over. And then I, you know, just for, you know, laughs, I looked at the score app and it was tied 21-21. I was like, oh, I'll turn it back on. They forced a field goal. I was like, okay, we actually have a chance to win this game. And then you know, they get unlucky at the end. They should have just kicked the field goal. Unlucky or stupid? I think stupid. I, I think I think it's a mix of both. I think they should have just kicked the field goal and said, you know what, let's get it over with. It was a really questionable call, I must say, that happened in this game where the Patriots elected to go for a field goal on the third down on one of the plays. I was – I was – I'm going to choose my words carefully. Ticked off, to say the least. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. If, I don't know if you saw it, Tom. I, that was it. Was disgusting. I, oh, I let's go back to it was awful. Well, what about like I don't know. I I'm all for trying to win that game because they had a chance to win that game. Of course they, they did. They should have won the game. No, they should have. But I mean, yeah. like you, you're saying you should have just Damian Harris ran it and then just if they don't make it, they kick so it. I think Buffalo. I think Buffalo would have at least at that. least give yourself a yeah. chance. Yeah. I think that I think Buffalo would have expected that though. He wouldn't have gotten any yardage. Yeah, no, I think I think it isn't a bad play. It's just hold on to the ball. Another question that I have too is I, well, I watched the replay. Ahead, Tom, sorry, I watched the replay, and I just I I don't see how the ball got knocked out of his arm because it looked like he had a pretty good well, hold on it. Well, yeah, well, I mean, it was a phantom ball. No, I mean the guy hit it pretty well. I mean, I think it was a combination of him hitting and him twisting, wasn't he, or something? Or? No, he hit it flat out, and it went. It just went out. And I don't know if he yeah. just hit it hard enough where his like arm like gave enough room between hit the rib cage and the arm, and it just yeah. came out or what. But it looked like he had a pretty good handle on it when I yeah. watched the replay of it. Well, I mean, all yeah, I mean, all in all, just like or yeah, I don't know. Don't they run drills all the time if someone fumbles where you have to hold onto a ball the rest of pre- uh, rest of the day, and everyone's trying to knock the ball out of your hand? Or is that just in my house? <laughs> Probably your house, but I, I think that happens in Bill's house too. I mean, yeah. typically when you fumble a football, you're on the dog pound. So I don't get the infatuation infatuation with Cam Newton. I'm done. I don't. He's not a winner. I'm sorry. He's not. He's not a winner. So I don't think Stidham's the answer. So yeah, I guess you just ride it out. But there will be a new quarterback for the Patriots next year. You mark my words. There's there's rumors floating around that it's going to be Jimmy G. Do you one think of the, one of the big one of the big wigs in football analysis is is uh, saying it could be Jimmy G. Which what who's this? What big wig? Uh, I don't remember the name. Tom Smith. Yeah. Oh, yeah. T S. No, my my dad was talking oh, about it the other night. He said it. I forget the name though. No, I mean is he because his uh, contract's up, right? 
I'm I, don't think, I, I don't think the 49ers are going to extend him and meaning renew his contract and give him the guarantee. I guess there's some sort of an option where they have to guarantee him X amount of dollars, the rest of his thing. But I don't think he's proven to San Francisco that he's worth uh, giving out the rest of his money on his contract for. So I'd take a chance if I were the Patriots. Yeah. The one thing that I did notice from last week's game when they when San Francisco came here, Garoppolo didn't set the world on fire from anything. But what I will say that Garoppolo showed is that he's a capable leader out on the field. They're going to run the ball effectively. They're going to set up plays effectively. And clearly the Patriots can't do that with Newton or Stidham or Hoyer or whoever the heck is the quarterback, flavor of the week club. Um, so that's my take. Garoppolo, to his – uh, to his discredit, I will say, he has shown that he cannot stay healthy. I don't know what the heck it is, but he's showing that it's either injury prone or he's made of glass. I, I don't know, but he's not showing me that he's somebody that I would take a gamble on with a long-term contract. So if the Patriots maybe want to give him a year or two. I'd say two. That's I'd fine. I'd say two just to – But. I also wouldn't rule out some other big name that could come into New England because I can tell you from the rumors that I've heard, Bob Kraft and Jonathan Kraft are pissed right now at how this team looks right now. And may maybe somebody else comes in. I don't know who it would be, but let's say, let's say Aaron Rodgers uh, doesn't do well with the Packers and doesn't lead them to a Super Bowl or remotely with the playoffs. What if you put Aaron Rodgers into the system with the Patriots? What would you What would you think of that? Um, I would say we need to get a deep threat. Yeah, we would. We would need to get a deep threat. I mean, put him into the Patriots culture. Maybe would he, he, would he leave? Would he leave Green Bay? Oh, I totally. think Green Bay. I, I mean, think after, Green Bay will, the drama, will say goodbye because after the drama it, this past off season, I'd say he definitely yeah. would leave. I, I would say he'd be on the market. I don't want to start the rumors here, but that's a name that the Patriots have shown some interest within. I know Bill's always had a – I mean – Jacoby Brissett, yeah. he's still backing up in Indy. I don't see Philip Rivers lasting long with the Colts. So is is – Jacob we don't want Philip Rivers somebody? and his twenty kids here in New England. No, we don't. We don't need. We don't <laughs> and growing. Need He's got a big family. Um, so I don't know. I, I maybe the the Raiders are are, are sick of uh, what's his name? Derek, Derek Carr. Carr. Yeah. Derek Carr. I don't yeah, think he's a winner. He seems like a hothead to me and a mess. I think we're just pulling. I think we're just like naming quarterbacks right. and like yeah, they could come here. Well, I just I want to make another point about the game on Buffalo, though. Like the difference I noticed between when I watched the first the parts of the first half I watched and what I watched in the second half, the biggest difference maker between the halves was Izzo. The only the only reason why they were able to make big plays was because they got Izzo the ball. Yeah. On those on those two plays where he caught the ball, that that helped them get into the red zone and in the in field goal range. At yeah, the I, end there. I think they're not like their they're cast not, isn't that they're bad. Not, they're not using all their um, weapons appropriately. So we'll have to see what happens. I mean, I, I would be downright shocked that the Patriots don't beat the Jets on Monday. I mean, that's it. If they don't, that's it. I'm done. I mean, they don't. They they wouldn't deserve to be followed the rest of the year. Um, that's just my take on it. I want to talk about Tampa. Uh, Tampa's now six and two. Brady, Brady and the Bucks got another win this past Monday night. And it was a close game. You know, it was enjoyable. I will say that. It was nice to see a game that was relatively competitive. And I like the connection that Brady has with Gronk still. I mean, who doesn't love a Brady-Gronk touchdown connection? I mean, that's great. Gronk has really shown in the past month that He's somebody to trust in, in the Bucks' offense. And Brady definitely has that faith in him still where he can get the job done. So I, I'm, happy. I'm happy with what I see so far with, um, with the Bucks and Tom Brady. Uh, they're a lot of fun. But they – well, I will say this. Like New York, the Giants are actually – they're a better team than their record. Because there are a couple games I've seen them on – where they play close games with other teams. I mean, they not may not be the best. They just don't know how to finish. I think they're going to get there. 
because their quarterback, which is the second year, I think, he's, he's doing okay. He's doing pretty well. He had a good uh, first couple games last year. And he's – I forget his name. I'm sorry. But I remember he made kind of a splash. But if anything, it just says, like, you know, any given Sunday, everyone – everything's up for grabs. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It's fun to watch. I don't know. I Listen, we had a good run. <laughs> but it's also good to watch the NFL. Yeah. I think this year is uh, the most entertaining that it's been in a while. Yeah, maybe maybe in, you know, 15 years. <laughs> Speak for yourself. If the Patriots aren't entertaining, then I'm not. I'm... I, I I just think, you know, there's a lot – There's there are a lot of teams out there this season that are making a lot of big splashes that haven't been able to in past seasons. Just for sports in general, I mean, you know how much I love particular, you know, sports and following it and stuff. This year – I've just, it hasn't been in me. I've watched it, you know, just because it's sports and all, but I'm not like, oh my God, I have to go and watch that game or uh, I have to, I have to get to the nearest TV to watch it or something like that. I think a lot of it actually started with how piss poor the Red Sox were this past year. And, and even from 2019, I mean, we saw the Patriots with Brady, just Brady didn't want to be there. The Bruins kind of teased us. And then Rask decides to up and leave. The Celtics, I'm not, you know, Phil, I'm not the biggest of, of hoop fans. I mean, they made it entertaining. I still think they should have went further than they did. But maybe, we're just, maybe, maybe we're just spoiled rotten because we've seen so much. I think Every it's a combination. Every team since 2008 has won a championship. Multiple, some of them. So we're, it's, we're in that stage where it's like, okay, we saw it. We're happy. Do we want more? Of course, because we're greedy. We're greedy Boston sports fans. So I don't know which team is going to win it next. It could be a while. Yeah, I think the C's are the most prime for it, but, I mean, they still have to make some moves. Well, there's a, a rumor chance. that Hayward wants out of contract. It's a good it chance is, yeah. for us to actually transition to one of the things I forgot I wanted to talk about, and there was a report, Phil, that says that Hayward wants the heck out of here. Yeah, he wants the he wants to do the someone had said it like a week the ago Al before. Horford thing. Exactly. I want to I want to do the Al I want to go the Al Horford route, um, which means go to a team like a rival team and do nothing. Sure, but I mean, uh, which you know, which is a shame because I was actually looking forward to that Philly rivalry again, and once again it kind of falls flat. Uh, but then you well you didn't have uh, what's his name Ben. Ben Simmons, uh, and you – I forget who else they had injured. But still, I mean, it's one of if those the things. the report is true, yeah. I will say if the report is true. See what um, they get. Goodbye. Yeah, see what they goodbye. get. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't be a bad I thing. mean, I you've be been injury upset. prone here throughout your career with the Celtics. You really haven't shown us that you can stay healthy, whether it's a freak injury or not. He's. I think he's sat out more than he's played. Bye. Probably. Goodbye. I mean, get him out. Get him off the books. See you later. It, that's how I feel. I mean, truthfully, I like the player, but I think he can upgrade. Yeah, I mean, if if not like upgrade, uh, I mean, just get a couple people to strengthen your bench. Maybe you get like one you good. Need, you know, you need tr- the center like we've talked about. You need your bench destroyed you basically. Destroyed. Yeah, it wasn't – I'll be honest, I think the bench wasn't the worst part of it. I think it just, like, when you got to the Eastern Conference Finals, you had uh, a Bayou – I apologize if I'm butchering his name – but he kind of went to town on you, and you didn't have anyone really to defend him that well. I just look um, at game six, too. I mean, with Andre uh, Iguodala. Iguodala. yeah, he, he made I, a difference there. What but a difference that would have made if the Celtics did it. And Danny had him. Danny, who gets no blame, none. Well, no, he, he's the he, golden saint of Boston. I mean, he doesn't get as much, I guess, in the he's sense of like people. He's won a freaking will... championship. Yeah, and like and he's all... been GM since for a while. since two thousand and three. Yeah, That's for a while. Twenty years, yeah. and you got one thing. I mean, I'm I'm not want. surprised he's been here or he still has his gig, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. No, I think you should give him grief. You should give him grief, uh, and also give him slight pass because who knew we were going to be in this position. Because I think he thought, you know, see where the team goes, or like he didn't want to add because he didn't think we had it, which I didn't necessarily disagree with. But I think with Hayward, I think it's a good chance if people, if teams will bite. You can even like Kemba Walker, uh, Kemba Walker, uh, Hayward, 
and maybe smart for like a a, a Beal or a Damian Lillard, uh, like and someone else. Like I, I will um, personally say, I think the heart and soul is still Marcus Smart of this team. So I, yeah, I, I mean. I, you, I'd have to be very, very intrigued to get a deal for him. I mean, Damian Lillard would be amazing. I might even put, I might even put to tell you the truth, I might even put Marcus Smart as probably my number two keep on the team outside of Tatum. Yeah. I know Brown is valuable and stuff, but I probably package, I put Brown ahead of Smart. Smart is your identity on this team, the spark, the heart and soul. And that's why I think yeah. his value to the team is higher than some of these other guys. I think he could be a detriment too. I think he could be, I mean, I love him. I love him as a player. I think you're right. He has a lot of the important intangibles, uh, but sometimes he gets in the way. Uh, he sometimes, sometimes he shoots more than shots, he, It's hit or miss. Yeah. And some, he took like, we talked about that game uh, six uh, against Miami. He took more shots than anyone. Right. And he didn't make a lot. Uh, no, as, as per the evidence of the score, but you know, I don't know. I think it's open to like bring another. If you bring Damian Lillard in and you have Brown, Tatum, Lillard, and you know, go from there, it might might be pretty great. But you know, we'll see. I mean, you got to really build a team, and you don't have a you don't have a bad place you're starting from right now. So the craziest part of this whole thing is, if I was to say a team is probably most capable of winning another championship, I would say it would be the Celtics. That would be my my pick on the board first. After that, I flip a coin. I flip a coin. Changing gears, I'm I'm pretty surprised. Not pretty. I'm actually very surprised that the Red Sox have not announced the return of Alex Cora yet. And there was a report out today that it's down to two people. I don't know if any of you guys saw it. Um, John Heyman from MLB Network. I don't love this guy. I think he's a hack. But the report came out and said that it's between Alex Cora, Alex Cora and Sam Fold as manager of the Boston Red Sox. And Sam Fold was a player that used to play for Tampa. I don't know if you guys remember him, the legend of Sam Fold. He's from this area. He actually went to uh, Phillips uh, Academy in Andover. He's grown up in the area and everything. Has a connection with Hein Bloom. And I'm a little nervous here that the Red Sox are going to pass here on Cora management ownership wants Cora back. But with Bloom being hired as GM, it's looking to me like they're going to give Bloom all the chance in the world to trust him in his next decision here. If the Red Sox actually do not bring Cora back, I am boycotting the Red Sox until the next manager comes in. It's to, How much more do you want to piss your fan base off? How much more? You already punted on this season and said, screw you fans. We're not bringing Mookie back. The one we're fan, yeah. Win. We're not going to bring a pitching staff in. We're going to have maybe one starter and let the bullpen battle it out for these stupid starts that they were doing. What the F is their problem? How long do you think it'll take, or how long do you think they are, are going to play the game of we'll do whatever and you always come back to us? And how long do you think they could do that? without real any ramification or repercussion? I think the fan base that is most damaging right now in Boston the is damage. the Red Sox fan base. I do. Yep. I really do. I think that – How long do you these, think – these, How long do you think owners, they could go on like this without really not like – Not long. I think, I think the fan support for the Red Sox has been flushed down the drain. We just won a championship in 2018 – and your fans pretty much hate your team and the way that it's run, the way that the players are put together, what has happened in the past, I mean, year and a half. I mean, come on. I don't know. I think they can go, I think they can go like two or three more years like this. You think I, think, think, I think next, next season is it. I, think I, don't, I don't know. I that don't time? like the hiring of Bloom. I know right. some people raved about it. I don't like it. I think that this really move know. was done to cheapen up the the payroll so John Henry can go buy his second yacht and sail away over to the Liverpool Soccer Club. And well, I'm sure he has more than as one. As much as he wants but... on the Red Sox. <laughs> no, I mean, he's like a – I mean, he's got more than one yacht. Like <laughs> go hit a freaking iceberg. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I don't know, man. I think they can do – I think, though, I think they're, they're there and they can do whatever they want. Because we're at we're at the behest of them. I understand what you're saying, and I think you're right. And when when or if, whenever things get back to whatever full capacity, will they sell out? I don't know. Because the season before this past one, didn't the sellout streak end? Yes, it did. Yeah. So yes, we'll see. Maybe and maybe they'll maybe they won't. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it wouldn't be in their best interest to drive the price down. But I think. Well, I, I, and we have the highest ticket seats in baseball yeah. still. Yeah. Still to this day, and that's the product that you put on the field. It's it, it's just it's. If somebody offered me Red Sox tickets for season tickets or oh here's tickets to next year's games if fans are allowed, I would light a match and I would blow them up in their face. That's what I do. You're a very violent guy. That's what I do. <laughs> I say um, bye bye. Yeah, not I mean, I guess worth my time, not worth my effort, not yeah. worth any sort of. I'm not giving those owners crap if that's the product they want to put on the field and they want to tick off the fan base. But don't you think I, they have us? Do you think they have us? You know what I mean? It's just, we're, we're at their behest, like no matter what happens. I Not to they, say it's right. They, I'm they, just I think, saying. I think they think that we're at their mercy in a way. It's like, no, I think, I think that's exactly what they think. And I don't like, think they're, I don't think they're fans. wrong. We're going to do whatever we want. If we want to cheapen yeah. the product, you people are still going to come. You're still going to buy our hot dogs. You're still going to buy our $15 freaking beer. But do you think he's right? They're going to the go whole. sing Kumaya to the freaking bank. Yeah. All right, but do you think they're do you think they're right to a degree? That they do have like a hold. I mean, like, being an owner myself, I would never ever ever do that to my customer base. Yeah. I would listen to my customer. Yeah, but you can't. Like you but you don't have the like you don't have the leeway. You know what I mean? At all. Well, I mean, there's some people that operate I know people personally. Yeah. I'm not going to name their names, but Tom's going to know exactly who I'm, I'm gonna, talking about. I'm going to put it in a graphic but right that here. That person who does right. his things does not give a flying crap about their biz. All they care about is the dollar sign. I'm different. I care about customers coming back, satisfied. Product. It means I'm not making yeah. as much stuff. That's fine. But because sometimes I I'd coincide. I have more people in and, yeah. and, happy, and happy customers because then you get repeat business. Then you get repeat, oh, I'm going to follow these people. I'm going to trust these people. Red Sox don't have that right now. There yeah, aren't I've, just people like me. That yeah. say, oh, you know what? Nick's wrong. I love this team. You know, he can do whatever you want. This team is wonderful. I'm well, not even that. I don't, I don't even think... I'm going to put my name on the green monster. Woo! But I think I think I that's like an that. extreme. Too. I mean, I guess yeah. There there <laughs> might be some people like that, but I think there is even the middle of the road. Like we talk Amazing about, like no. well, <laughs> I think we talk about like it's true. Well. Suck on I mean, this, John Henry. Well, you know, but man, some people are just not fair with the fans, but fans for X amount of years, forever. And like, oh, I don't like this team. But then it's just kind of like, but you're still watching. You're still maybe paying attention a little bit. And you'll lose like, a lot of other fans. I don't want to as a fair weather fan because I'm not. I don't think. No, passion, I'm not saying you passion are. Passionate care. I've always been passionate about the things I follow and do and everything. And if someone half-asses it and doesn't do the best job, and it could be a lot better. Yeah, they should. But I mean, right. I think I think they have enough leeway because it's a major league sport. They have enough leeway where it just kind of they can do whatever they want. And I think we'll see what happens next year. It's power hungry. It's 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 power We're hungry just, people that power hungry. Just like or they see the they see the dollar signs. They see like oh, we don't want to spend this amount of money. I mean, We've some people don't. I know this kind of started even... with the whole thing with um, you know, the Alex Cora thing. What do you guys? Oh, that's great. I think it's crazy, but. Right. Uh, but do you I, think I see Cora the, actually will. Do you think they're just trying to tease us and do these interviews and drag I, I it think, out? Well, I the, think they're trying to do exactly what they had you do just now, five minutes ago. Spaz out? Go, spaz out and go on a rant. Well, but, but, I yeah. Think, yeah. but I think some people don't even go to the game just you know to see the team. I think some people go to the game just to say they went to Fenway. Yeah, I agree. And I think there, I think there's enough contingency of that and people who are so depressed Caroline. about it and will just do it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it, it's not right. It's just what, what's happening. It's the facts, and you need to face it. But we also have uh, – no, I, but I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with what you're saying. I just yeah. think they're the, the just people, – People want to go to Fenway because it's Fenway. It's one of the few parks that are still standing. Well, I mean, it is, though. I mean, like – 
despite who's running it, you're like, oh, it's still Fenway. It's still kind of crazy. I mean, so, I'd still go to I'd still go to the old Yankee Stadium if it was still standing. Yeah, I mean, I go Wrigley. I mean, yeah. just I mean, they're not I not bad. I, 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 I would yeah. like to see Wrigley and everything. I'm more talking about those diehard fans that. Yeah, I'm with you. No, I, but I don't. These are ticket holders. Like I have a family member who has season tickets, and he's like. I'm just going to flush these down the drain. Like, they're not <laughs> but you're still paying for them. Don't pay for them. No, he's not going to renew them. That's what yeah, he's all doing. Right. So he's basically Good. telling, telling I was the owner, say. screw you. You're not, if this is what you're going to put out, then so But if it does, if that does show up on there, like, you know, if enough of that happens to them, then I think they might change stuff. But I, I don't know. I don't see that happening Significant, significantly. I think them cutting payroll is on, uh, offsets people not buying tickets for at least two to three years, if they do it the way they want to do it. Because that's, you know, but it, I don't know. I'm not saying it's right. I just think that's how they, they're going about so it. The last question that I had before we wrap up the show was this, and, and I'm going to ask you if you think or can you think of any other sports franchise who has won four championships since, uh, what, 2000, you know, so that's four years. We're in 2020. So they've got four championships in 20 years. Have you ever seen another ownership group where fans dislike them so much that they want them out? Because I can't think of another one. Well, I mean, there were the Yankees for a while. Steinbrenner, okay. Yeah, Steinbrenner and them. I think yeah. I think that's there. I mean, I don't know the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, I know they won four championships. No, I'm serious. In the in the ni- late '90s, the early 2000s, they won like yeah. four four championships, right? Or they won a bunch. They won them and the Devils were like the two teams back yeah. then. But I don't know what, like, if they're French. I don't think they're not loved, but I don't know what happened to them via ownership. That's a good question, though. I mean, or you could say also Crazy. Detroit Pistons or the New York. Yeah, I was going to say the Pistons. Yeah. The Bulls. The Bull- <laughs> oh, the Bulls is a great example. Just, like, from the 90s, and then they're just like, yeah. you know. But that, oh, that's a tough one, too. So that was that was my basic question that I just wanted to add. It, it makes an interesting, definitely an interesting topic in debate. A good one. But anyways, guys, it was great to get my rant out and get that out of my system for now, of course. You know that'll change next week. I'll have something else that'll be harping. I'll be harping about. But anyways. Have you been um, watching Tyler Banks? Patriots? Oh, no. Why? Why, Tom? Why? Why don't Have you, you watched Dance go, with the Stars, Nick? Why, why are you popping that bubble? <laughs> I'm not popping that one. I'm not popping that one. So anyways, I hope you all have a great rest of the week. We will see you again next week where I'm sure there will be another rant of some sorts. And cross your fingers that Alex Cora is back as your Red Sox manager. And I hope we get to see the one in eight Jets. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. So, for Nick Face. I'm Smith. Phil Healy. We will see you next time on another wonderful edition of Face the Facts. See you later. <laughs>